and a good day, yeah, like anybody else, I can be, you know, fully enjoys a spring, everything's great, everything's a laugh, bumping into people, lovely kind of spontaneous things happening, you know, doing things that I enjoy and love, and you just don't really think about it that much. You take it for granted when you're having a good time, you know? If I'm having a bad day, then you know. <laughs> I will shut off and I will close down. I don't want to talk. I don't want to see people. If it's really, really bad, I won't get out of my bed and I won't answer the phone or I'll avoid things and I just won't do anything. And I just, I can be completely, utterly just numb. And in extremes, those can roll into days, sometimes weeks if it's really bad, but that's if it's really, really bad and really serious. My first time I, I came across any kind of problems, I would have been about 18, 19. Uh, and to all intents and purposes, it should have been a really, really happy time in my life. I had uh, independence. I had a grant for college. I was studying to go to art school. Uh, I had a girlfriend. Um, everything was great. And um, one day I was in a class, a modern studies class at college, and I was watching the, the lecturer. And I suddenly couldn't really understand what he was saying. It wasn't that I just couldn't get the point he was talking about, it was that I literally couldn't understand what he was saying. And the more I tried to understand, the more I tried to concentrate, the more I couldn't get it. And I just started to sweat and think, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what's going on. And I thought, what will I do, what will I do? Nobody else seems to be noticing this apart from me. And I went, and I just couldn't get up. And then I realised I was gripping onto the desk. And I looked at my hands in the desk and they were like white knuckles. I was just gripping so hard. The whole nature of something like a panic attack in particular is if you don't know what is happening to you and you, you're not talking about it and you have no reference, that's going to create panic. So it kind of feeds itself. So you, you kind of, the more you're panicking, the more you're panicking. Anything that kind of tricks your brain, trying to take yourself out of there, trying to get out your own head in a way. It's finding little ways to do that. That can be, you know, looking at something, reading something, hearing something. Something that stops you obsessing about a thought. For me, I love art or record shops or libraries. So that can be just flipping and going, oh God, that album. Or, oh, look at the cut. Well, that's a brilliant record sleeve. Oh, who, who, who wrote that song? Who's up? Oh God, that's weird, because I've got an album back. Before you know it, your, your chain of thought is changing. You have an illness, uh, and it should be treated like any other illness. It's a bit like if you had the flu or something. You know, you're, you're not going to go out in the, the snow in your pants. You, know? <laughs> you accept it, and you take vitamin C, and you eat chicken soup, and you sit and watch a film, and, and you wait till it passes or whatever, and you do everything you can do to make yourself better. That all sounds great, but if you're under that cloud, it doesn't feel like it's going to pass. You know, I know that feeling that it feels like it's an eternity. I'm aware that uh, <laughs> it's not as easy as <laughs> following your own advice, and I am the worst person for following my own advice at times. I hid it for quite a while. It was still a kind of culture of things being looked on as, you know, as some kind of weakness, or there was something wrong with you that kind of put a slight on you, your personality as an individual or something. So, and also you were still kind of getting used to things yourself. What was really going on with you? The nature of a, a lot of mental illness, I think, is about isolation. It's about making you feel alone. The more that I spoke to people, the more that people would go, oh, I, you know, <laughs> and share their experiences. Nowadays, I don't really get panic attacks as such. I think I can get anxious. Uh, or sometimes a bit overwhelmed. But it's realising that everybody does. You know, that's quite normal. People get anxious about things. The nature of the work I do, you, you kind of need nerves and anxiety to an extent, or it would be very, very strange. I mean, if you walked out in front of 12,000 people and felt numb, it would be really weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's also a healthy thing. It's just realising that that is part of your makeup, it's, it's not letting it dominate your life.